Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we'll be going to take a look at the new graph widget uh, because it has changed slightly since the previous two videos so to make sure they're relevant still and make sense we're just going to brush up on the new things that have changed within it. That includes the options to scale automatically by units of 1024 and the new vast improvement system uh, which is we'll take a look at what that can do for you how it works what it means along with a few other options in the custom graph widget so to start with it's pretty much the same so we're just going to create a throughput graph as we have done in a previous video um, same so far adding in the graph data uh, and let's bring in all the devices all the groups and everything and look for that interfaces data source so interfaces snp64 there we go one of the immediate changes you're going to see here is this toggle for treat as a glob expression now that means that if you have a device that you've called star or if you've got a device with what could be a glob expression in its name we can just bring in that device or just that group now instead of treating it as a glob expression uh, so you've got that option to toggle that on and off there so I'm going to bring in all the interfaces uh, and we're going to look for, as we have in that previous video, the in octets, save that, clone it, and create the same for the out octets. There we go. And rename it just to match that. <laughs> so we are bringing those in as we did before. And we're going to combine them to create the throughput. So we're going to add a virtual data point. Nothing different here so far. Insert the in octets and the out octets. Add them together and multiply the whole lot by eight. And if you want to know why we're doing the multiplying the whole lot by eight, or how we know to do that, it is in one of the previous videos about looking up different definitions and how to get to them. So the next thing we'd normally be doing in a graph before this update is selecting which of these lines we want to draw. But actually, that's already been done here in the graph data tab. So unlike before, we now actually want to go back in. And we have three options here. We've got default, custom, where you can put in whatever name you want there and change which type of line it is, or do not display, which is actually what we want for the in octets and the out octets. In the throughput, we're going to go in, we're going to select custom because it defaults to the throughput there, which is not very descriptive. Uh, and we're going to remove that data source name just to, because we know what data source it is. We know it's throughput. So we're just going to make that a bit neater. Uh, it only defaults to throughput if you do not display the other previous ones, by the way. It's not always like that. Okay, so to save that, so it's now just drawing that line. Um, next thing to note is the graph type. We actually, before, would be able to show you the top 10 or an aggregate, for example. Uh, now we can actually do top 10, top 5, top 25, or that aggregate of min, max, average, or sum. We're going to go back to the top 10. OK. Further down, we then have the y-axis label. So you can do, you know, we've got different numbers there. You've got different percentages, options. Uh, but we're just going to keep it with numbers. And it's actually in bits per second. So let's like that. And finally, the at this point, the next thing to look at there is the auto scale units. So because this is in data transfer, we actually do want to auto scale in units of 1024. Previously, what I would have done is in this expression for the throughput, I would have done as I have done here to calculate the bits per second, but then I would have divided by 1024 once to get to kilobytes, twice for megabytes, and so on. This will actually do this automatically for us. So if I save and close now, you can see we've got bits per second, but then, you know, 48 megabits per second, 64 megabits, and so on. It'll auto scale for us. So that's what we would have expected to see before, or very similar to it at least. Now let's take another look in the configuration here. Uh, there's a few other things to look at here. Firstly, you've got these graph ranges. So you can actually set these here. You can say auto adjust the maximum, or if you're doing percentages, I'd probably recommend going or setting the, the maximum to 100. Um, I just want to keep it auto. You can do the same for the minimum. And then the last thing I actually want to look at here is this difference between visual average and the vast option. So previously, what we would have done is use the visual average, and that's what we're drawing at the moment. Uh, and really, it's it's a way of showing 
all the data in a convenient uh, way. I'm going to clone this graph and show you the difference on a vast uh, display as well. So let's use vast there. Save and close. So I've got the two side by side. And they look pretty similar. The vast has a little bit more going on here. And that's generally what you're going to find. So Logic Monitor doesn't actually aggregate any data. If you look down, if I zoom in and look at the individual minute by minute data, it'll all be there minute on minute. But when you try and display that all on a graph, it's going to be quite packed. So it will actually average out some of the data to look at trends as we look over a long scale of time. Um, and if I look, zoom in on both of them, they're actually going to look pretty much identical because over a short amount of time, there's very little difference between the visual average and the fast display. It's when you start getting uh, longer time frames that we then do see more going on. And that's why we've got slightly more packed data here on the VAST than you have here. You can also see there's this higher spike. So on the VAST data, you've got 192 megabits per second. And on the uh, non-VAST, you're actually going up to this sort of almost 80. And that's the main difference. If you're looking at network trends, the visual average is going to be good. So you're just looking at trends of when things go up and when things go down. And we can see that pretty well here. If you want to look at um, the actual peaks, the highest points and the lowest points, that's what VAST does. It preserves the peaks and the troughs. So you actually see uh, where it peaks to the highest point and where it goes to the lowest point. And that's going to be really good for capacity planning, things like that. So you can actually see over a long period of time, you know, what's been your highest use, what might it go to again. Um, but as I say, that's only the case over a longer period of time. If you're looking over a day or less, really, there's going to be very little difference. So use whichever one makes the most sense for what you're trying to do. OK, thanks for watching. If you have any questions as before, just get in touch via the email address at the bottom of the screen.